what is up gang this is x team featurette channel and i'm chris and today i have a tgix review for you and it's gonna be spooky kind of it is hacker lantern the 1988 flick by jag mundra and um I, this was my first time watching it actually um this came out this is the 30th anniversary edition by uh, massacre video and it came out a few years ago and I haven't really heard like too many people talk about it since then. Um, my brother-in-law was like always really obsessed with this. So um, I don't know why after watching this, this is a bad movie. Um, it's fun. I wouldn't compare it to like things like, you know, Troll 2 or The Room, like that caliber of bad movie, but it's still, it's, it's bad. Um, it's supposed to be a slasher and it's like based around the satanic panic. The story is centered on a family and the first person we're introduced to is Tommy. He is played by Gregory Scott Cummins. He was in um, Blood Games that Vinegar Syndrome released like a year or so ago. Um, I watched that and I was not a fan of it. And uh, the Tommy's interacting with his grandpa and the grandpa is played by High Pike who is like supposed to be a name in this movie. I think that it's supposed to be the biggest name. But, um, like, the thing that he's most known for is, like, uh, Blade Runner, which I guess he was not very good at. So, I, th that's kind of weird. I'm not sure. I think, I think the IMDb said that the budget for this was, like, 5.5 million. And I would be shocked if that was true because there was, like, the people in this were not that good. And um, it's kind of weird, though, because all the girls took their clothes off. So that was like kind of strange for like a low budget kind of terrible movie. There was lots of nudity in it. So I don't know, maybe they, maybe they put the cash into that because it wasn't for the like talent. I'll tell, the, tell you that much. Um, so we see Tommy and grandpa and Tommy is like a little kid at this point, but he's like kind of weird. And uh, grandpa shows up and he's like a pumpkin farmer and he's bringing him his Halloween pumpkin because it's Halloween. So he picks his pumpkin out of the truck and he also gives him this like chintzy little like, you know, toy skeleton and um, and then he gives him this weird thing of tissue, like tissue paper, and he opens it up later and he's like swinging it back and forth and it's like, it looks, I thought that it was like a pendulum, like, like for hypnosis and I'm like, does grandpa want Tommy to be like, come to become a hypnotherapist or something? Like what is going on here? Um, but he turns it around later and there's a pentagram on the back side of it. So it's a pentagram necklace that Tommy's swinging like a pendulum. So it was kind of strange, but we're like, okay, so grandpa's a Satanist. That's what's going on. So then it makes sense as to why mom and dad, you know, they say, you know, Tommy, where did you get this pumpkin? And, um, grandpa gave it to him and they're like oh where when did you see grandpa so they obviously are concerned that grandpa's hanging around you get the sense that they don't want him there so tommy's like carving his pumpkin and he like you know slips and cuts his hand and starts sucking the blood out of his hand and the mom's like oh don't do that because it's gross and <laughs> tommy's like oh i like the taste of blood grandpa says blood's good for you and i'm like is grandpa a vampire like what's going on here the next scene is the mom and dad like talking about grandpa showing up and the dad is like so mad and the mom's like I t I'll talk to him you know I'll tell him never to come back here and the husband's like well you know you, you told him before and he's not listening I'm gonna go take care of it so dad rushes over to grandpa's and uh, whenever he gets there he's interrupting a satanic ritual and they don't like that you know the satanists don't take kindly to that so um, as grandpa's talking to the dad, another member of their satanic cult bashes him over the head with a hammer. And then they light his truck on fire. They stick him in the truck, light the truck on fire to, I guess, make it look like an accident or something. Uh, looks pretty suspicious to me, but at any rate, um, I guess 13 years later, we pick up the story and Tommy is living in his mom's basement. He's the oldest child out of three. So there's Tommy and then there's... Uh, Vera is his um, sister and then his youngest brother or whatever is named Roger and Roger is now a cop and uh, Vera is just like spending so much time with her friends and just has no time for her family and uh, you know the mom's kind of like 
has like empty nest syndrome because you know Tommy is just like you know he's living in the basement but what good is he he's like detached from the world he looks like a creep like he has he's still wearing his pentagram his like little pentagram necklace from whenever he was a kid um and he's like wearing these like you know like sleeveless shirts and he's like working out and stuff but he's like he has a walkman and he's listening to you know like heavy metal music there's this one scene where he is, um, I guess, like, listening to his music, like, fantasizing that he's, like, in a band because it, like, cuts to, like, a, a music video. And as he is, he's, like, playing guitar or something because, of course, he's playing guitar. And there's this um, dancing girl in it that, like, is, like, shooting uh, lasers out of her eyes and, like, making the rest of the band disappear. So it's just... Tommy and this fantasy girl in this like music video fantasy he's having and I'm like is he gonna like it, are they gonna like do it or something and then she like kills him with a pitchfork and that was like the end of his fantasy like he's fantasizing about being uh killed by a by a pitchfork I don't know it was just really really strange and the music like they were playing the song he's a devil's son and this song repeated over and over again in this movie and I love the movie uh, New Year's Evil but this reminded me a lot of ways like New Year's Evil because it's it's a slasher there's like a lot of music in it it's very very repetitive there's a lot of musical sequences in it um, and the music just gets so annoying just like in New Year's Evil and um, it's kind of like that same quality. So I would very much liken Hack O'Lantern to New Year's Evil, which I like that movie. So then I liked this one. It was okay. Um, so yeah, Tommy's just kind of a loser. And I'm like, oh, this guy has to be a virgin. Look at this loser. Um, but no, he was, he had a girlfriend and his girlfriend had her own place. <laughs> and uh, she was like super hot. Tommy's girlfriend was actually like played by a porn star. So... <laughs> I guess she's like, you know, used to being in terrible movies. They're talking about this girl and, you know, they're like, oh, of course, she's dating Tommy Drendel. You know, she has a pentagram tattooed on her ass. And um, I don't know, it, it was, it looked terrible, like somebody sharpied it on. And that's probably exactly what happened. So, uh, you know, that just added to the endearing quality of this movie. But basically, you know, grandpa shows up and says that, oh, tonight's Tommy's big night. You know, it's Halloween and... Halloween's the night that Tommy's dad was killed mysteriously or like had his accident and uh, you know Tommy's mom just doesn't take Halloween very well since since her husband died and now you know her son is dating this like satanic whore and uh, you know gallivanting with his satanic grandpa and no one just knows what's going on and um, all the while there's this party that's being planned in town and uh, Vera's friend, Beth, is like helping her plan this, I guess, this big Halloween party in the, in the town. The younger brother, Roger, who's the cop, he's going to be like manning the party. Like he's working on duty at the party. And I'm just like, what type of, like, why is there a cop just like chaperoning a party? It was very, just very strange. But anyway, it puts him in those, in that place. So... Vera is hanging out with her friend, uh, Beth, and then Beth kind of sees Roger, like, ooh, who's that, you know? Um, this movie was so ridiculous. Like, Beth and Roger, like, did it in a cemetery hours after they met. Um, it was, and it was so bizarre, too. There's just so many weird puns. There's puns about the cemetery. Uh, oh, yeah, I think, I know it's a very grave situation, like, uh... And then there's lots of puns about Roger being a cop. Like, uh, what did they say? Oh, you might have to detain me. Like, um, you know, search and seizure. Uh, you know, just very, very terrible puns and jokes about cops and about graves and cemeteries. Um, and I guess the town has a real problem with their graves being robbed lately. So I guess, you know, the, the police force is, is inundated with grave robbers. So there's a scene where Roger has to go to the cemetery because somebody reported a grave robbing or something, somebody poking around in the cemetery. And he shows up and he's like, he pulls out his like 
pistol and he's like, oh, hey, we get out of there. And it's just a group of kids. They're like, we dropped our Halloween candy. And Beth's like, oh, you almost died. <laughs> and then they, that's when they do it. They're like, oh, might as well just do it next to this open, you know, this fresh grave with a hand sticking out. <laughs> Seems like a really romantic spot. And that's what they did. And the music was ridiculous. It was like a terrible porn. So there's this one scene where like grandpa and the mom character are, I guess she's like trying to stop him from going to see Tommy. And uh, he, it was so disgusting. Like we learn that grandpa's incest and we gather that he raped his daughter and that he's Tommy's real dad. So there's like a really, you know, grandpa's always taken a, a liking to Tommy and why is, he all, why is he always singling out Tommy? Well, we gather it's because he's Tommy's real dad. And uh, he just like started like grabbing his daughter's like boobs and stuff. And I'm like, all right, this movie's like really grossing me out at this point. Um, it, you know, the grandpa character was disgusting to begin with. And then that just added to it. And I'm like, okay, the, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need this right now. One thing I don't understand is like why everybody sees people showing up in this mask. They're in like satanic robes wearing this mask and nobody questions who it is. Tommy's girlfriend sees that this person show up at their house and she's like, oh, Tommy, you scared me. And then she just basically takes off her <laughs> towel and is like, I'm Lady Godiva. Like, you know, do me, Tommy. And, uh, you know, she gets, you know, she gets something. I don't know if, I don't know if she got what she was asking for, but um, it's just like, it's so, I don't know, it's a horror movie, but whatever. But th it just happens over and over again. Like, it's not something that they do, like a, a device they, they use once. It's just like they keep on saying like, oh, you know, oh, you scared me. Oh, it's Tommy. And, uh, you know, it's not always Tommy. And there's multiple people because there's a whole cult of these people. So we never really know who it truly is. The other thing is um, Grandpa has a terrible accent. I think he's supposed to sound like he's Southern or something. I don't know where this is supposed to take place, but um, he sounds Southern and it's very awkward. And he's wearing his satanic robes and then under them, he just has like a, a flannel shirt and like his, he looks, he's, he looks like a farmer wearing like a satanic robe and this weird mask over it. It's very, very awkward. Another kill that we see, um, you know, for some reason, Tommy goes home and sees Vera in bed with her boyfriend that, uh, you know, I guess she's, she's been dating him for a month and they still haven't done it. I think maybe today's to the day. And, uh, you know, Tommy shows up and did not like his sister getting nailed. So, um, you know, something, something took place there. I'm not really going to go into much more detail because, um, you know, there's, there's a little twist and I don't really want to, uh, you know, ruin that because it is fun. Something else that's noteworthy. This is 96 minutes and I feel like, I feel like they got it to like, I don't know, like an hour. And then we're like, oh, we, we got to find something else. So let's, let's fill it with some, some stuff. There's so much filler in this movie. There are countless uh, music sequences, like the music video scene in Tommy's Fantasy. They uh, play clips of that over and over again. There's also a scene at the party with a stripper and it was, it was just a lady stripping. And I, I was like, what is even the point of this? Um, I don't know. I guess it was to show some skin. I don't know. Roger was there like watching it and I was like, okay, is Beth going to show up and get mad that the dude that she nailed like three minutes ago is like, you know, being hit on by a stripper. But no, that didn't happen. There was just like absolutely no point to it. And then immediately after the stripper, it goes straight into a terrible stand-up comic. So the comic goes from inside the party to outside. There's probably like, I don't know, like eight or 10 people out there. And he's just like, hey guys, guys, did, uh, did you see the stripper in there? Did you see the stripper? Oh no. Oh, you gotta go see her. She's great. Oh, uh, she has the biggest blue eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> and I'm just like, Oh yeah, she reminds me of one of those girls in the in the girly magazines. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, I love those magazines. I love those girls. And I'm like, what is this? This is deranged. Um, I looked it up because I was like, this has got to be an actual comedian because it was just like, 
his delivery, I was just like, this is not an actor. This is a comedian. And it was. I was right. I looked him up and he was uh, Bill Tucker. And I guess he has like a, a Twitter and stuff, which has not been active in like a year. But, you know, Bill Tucker, I'm sorry if you see this, but I, you were not good in that movie. That was an embarrassment. So between that and all the terrible puns, I should say Roger the cop is like full of bad puns. It's just like not even right. Um, but you know, it's, it's a very cheesy movie. It's not good, but it's fun. <laughs> so if you like bad movies like I do, I do suggest you check it out. If you can't find the uh, Massacre video release, I don't even know if this is like still available because I got it a while ago. Um, but it exists, so it's out there. But if you cannot find this, it's free to watch on Tubi with ads. So, I don't know, give that a watch this Halloween season. There are a bunch of special features on here. Just take a quick look at, there's the close-up of the art, and there's the back. Let's look at these special features. So we have new 2K restoration from the original camera negative, remastered 2.0 stereo mix, uh, and original mono mix. Um, I, it did look really good. There were some spots where it's like really grainy. You could tell that it was like, you know, an old movie, but for the most part, it was very, it looked really, really good. Um, and there were some parts where the, the music was like mixed like too loud. There was one killing scene that I recall that I was like, okay, this is, this needs to be lower. Um, newly recorded audio commentary with producer Raj Meh, I don't know how to say that. English language captions. I did watch the subtitles and they were good. Uh, isolated soundtrack option. I don't suggest that. Uh, the powers and the blood feature at featuring interviews with stars Gregory Scott Cummings. Is it Cummings or Cummins? They, sp they spell it both ways on here. So who knows? And then uh, Katina Garner. And then rare public access interview featuring Katina Garner, Maria Gant, and director Jag Mundra behind the scenes photos and trailers for other Massacre video releases. So this is pretty cool. I kind of, you know, wish that it looked more like the tape, but this is cool too. So there's that. And this is a DDV Blu-ray combo. And uh, let's just take a gander. And here it is. So it's pretty neat. I don't even know what's behind these discs if I move it. Can you even see? Oh. It's a pentagram. Hmm. So there is a lesser celebrated Halloween flick suggestion for you. If you're into bad movies, give it a watch. Just, uh, you know, if you happen to be carving a jack-o'-lantern at the time, give it 100% of your undivided attention, or you might have an accident like Tommy did. If you've seen this, let me know about it. Let me know what you think. Uh, if, if you uh, watch it in the future and you hate it, I'm sorry, but I, I like it. There you have it. Happy Halloween. Thanks to all Ian's for watching and come back next time and I will have more reviews or whatever in the future. Bye.